Well, good afternoon and welcome to Skybus Oval for this massive round one clash in the Tasmanian State League. The final season of the Tasmanian State League. It's a big one in store this afternoon. Lauderdale taking on Clarence. An intriguing fixture to set off the season. Two of the highly fancy Premiership uh, favourites. Two teams who've recruited heavily over the off-season and look set to challenge the Tigers to dethrone them this season. I'm Andrew Calling, joining me to call the action this afternoon. Bo Downham, Bo, welcome to the coverage and uh, what are you expecting here this afternoon? Thanks for having me back, Joey. It's going to be a great coverage this afternoon. It's going to be really interesting to see the ruck battle, I reckon, because Noah Holmes is a laid out. I think Connor McGee is going to be the Ruckman this afternoon, but it's going to be interesting. Obviously, Andrew Phillips just coming off the AFL, Sam Siggins and Hayden Smith going to be there for Lauderdale as well. So Clarence, they're going to be a little bit shorter, I reckon, in the ruck department. Yes, yeah, certainly an interesting late switch there, and it's an area of real strength for Lauderdale. Uh, big signing, Andrew Phillips coming into the team. Thought he was actually uh, really good at Essendon when he was playing there. Still well and truly up to AFL level. To be able to bring him in and have Siggins as well, what, what an absolute luck. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be really interesting. Luke Swinton, the captain, is uh, he's not going to be playing this afternoon for Clarence, so that's a, an interesting fact there. He's listed to do the running, so it'll be a bit interesting to see how he does there. Umpire Chris Kate, Brad Person, I think that's Ben Bannister as well, so congratulations to all the umpires. Obviously, the last season of the TSL going to get underway very shortly. Clarence have gone got a few players over the off-season. Archie Jones is an emergency today. Will um, He's come down from North Launceston. They've recruited Jack Rewild, obviously. He won't be playing this afternoon, but well, we'll see him soon. Just getting some uh, audio, so I think we're good to go here and uh, really looking forward to this one. Bowen, what a glorious day for football. There's not a cloud in the sky down there at the tip. Uh, Start to the season here on Good Friday. Often a day with not uh, not a heap to do, so why not uh, tune in and watch uh, a massive, massive uh, start to this TSL season? Couldn't get uh, a more intriguing matchup first up, I reckon, mate. Absolutely, I think Lauderdale going into this. No Mick Robinson, but I don't think it really matters too much. They've gone and got Thor Boscott from Signet as well, so they're, they're obviously pretty <laughs> highly rated amongst all the media and all the fans out there. They're they're pretty. Well, they're tipped heavily to be one of the Premiership favourites as well as Clarence, so this game is going to be absolutely awesome, Joey. Yeah, everyone really uh, loading up trying to win this last ever TSL before the move back to regional leagues uh, next season. So they'll leave it all out there, but uh, the time for, for pre-season talk is nearly done. We, it's all a bit of an unknown heading into the heading into the season. There's plenty of speculation who's going to be good, who's not going to be good, who's going to improve, but we're about to start to, to find out and see, uh, see out on the pitch just how much of an impact some of these new players can have. Everyone, of course, chasing the, uh, the Kimber Tigers, uh, the premiers from last year. And a fantastic season from them. And certainly wouldn't be ruling out the uh, the powerhouses from the north, uh, even though they are maybe blooding a few more younger players, Launceston, North Launceston. They're quality young players who tend to come through that system. We saw last year, though, still some uh, 
some real quality up there. So I think it's going to be a fascinating final season of TSL. Oh, absolutely. I'm really keen to see how everyone goes. Obviously, Glamorkia fielding a Dev League team this year, so that's great news. Hopefully, they'll be a little bit more competitive. We'll see next week. But you can see all those guys going down. I think they might be the forward line. Maybe Thor Boscott playing forward. That's that's interesting because I would have had him in the midfield. But the midfield for Waterdale is so star-studded. They've obviously got Siggins. You've got Sutton. A lot of other players in there which can obviously rotate through. So that's why they're such a heavily favorited team, I reckon. See so Siggins and Phillips both heading in there. Looks like Phillips will be the one taking the ruck work and Siggins playing on the ball. Uh, such an influential player. They might be able to swing him forwards, but it'll be quite the double act. They're going to have to contend with the Roos. And uh, big task here. And Max Mapley looks like he might be the one getting uh, first crack in there. They might get too many tougher assignments than this one first up. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting. Good luck to him, obviously. This this ruck battle is going to be really interesting, I reckon. And this is a quick note. Alan Christensen not playing today, so he'll be coaching in the box. It'll be really interesting to see how he goes. Last year, they were pretty disappointing. Well, they probably should have made top four, but just a few losses let them down. So see how we go. So we're underway here in season 2024. The final season of the TSL is underway and it's Phillips who gets the first hit out. Siggins just running past the ball and it'll be Mapley sending the Roos deep forward to begin with. Green loitering out the back, couldn't quite find its way to him. Here's a Loams, just gets the handball if in time to Dolliver. Dolliver sweeps it across to Keegan Ryan for the perfect start for the Roos. They find the big sticks 20 seconds into this one and it's a red hot start for Clarence. Surge forward there from Clarence was great. Mapley didn't care where it was going. Just kick it forward. Josh Green looks like he's lost a few as well. He was, he was, he was kind of biggish last year playing for all in this far. No offence, but it looks like Good he's thanks. cut down. He's going to be really dangerous up forward for Clarence. We obviously know what he can do, Josh Green. And that goal there is the perfect start within 20 seconds. So great start there for Clarence. Just the surge forward. We've seen a lot of AFL teams do it. Just kick it forward. Hopefully everything goes right. So... Great start for Clarence. First inside 50, first goal. Not down there, good things will happen. Perfect start for the Roos, back to the middle. Phillips wins it down to Siggins. Flick the handball off there to Hooker. Hooker's just coughed it up though. He won back there by Hanslow. Good tackle laid by Hooker, going absolutely nowhere. Back to Norton. You know what uh, a key mover he is in this Roos engine room. There's a uh, well ruck there by Mapley, slaps it away. Sutton first to the fall of it though. Turns away into space and he'll head out towards the wing. Strong mark taken there by Sam Tilly. Gets it moving quickly up towards the half forward line. There's Boscott presenting up nicely. He takes it, gets it moving. Kick not a great one for Smith though. Just kind of in the no man's land. The Clarence defence should be able to see it away here. Bush under some pressure. Got it to Howard. And now Wiley. Turn back with the hands and tight to the line. They're able to clear defensive 50. Just keep that ball in motion. The ball just eluding Tompkins. There's Ned Shaw. And he's immediately wrapped up by Bush. See, Clarence just want to get it forward. Wardell wasn't a great kick from Boscott, but you can see what they're trying to do as well. And Phillips gets the better of Mapley, but straight down to Norton. can get a hold of it. Mapley over the top, got the handball to Dolliver. Dolliver kicks a tumbling, ugly one up towards the half forward line. Charging on out of there was Tyler Martin, and he's brought down, maybe in the back. And Bias says he'll toss it in. Great crowd. It looks like down there at the tip. You can just see everyone in the back have, have come and rallied behind. Oh, it looks great. Wonderful day for football. Couldn't ask for better conditions than this to kick things off. Phillips again won it down. This time to Hooker. Hooker handballs it across and then blasted on out of there by Ratcliffe towards the half forward line. Just playing from behind was Walsh defending, but the free kick I think will go the way of Keegan Wiley. Always a good user for the Roos. There's Keegan Wiley, someone they love to get uh, the ball in the hands off, off that half-back line. Such a penetrating kick on him. Sends this one wide and pinpoint. Finds his man taking the mark in there, Holmes. And moving quickly inside to Bush. Bush back to Wiley. Room to distribute. Goes wide, searching kick. Almost brought in by Mapley. Phillips there to pressure. Spills out behind. Paprotny battling away. And he just scored it over the line by Phillips. 
Great start here by Andrew Phillips. He mentioned that he, could, he probably could have played another season, and uh, that's showing already against the young Mathley. He's done well, though. He, he looks pretty agile, Mathley. He can, he can probably run all day. And probably a great option up forward as well. Certainly going to have his work cut out for him today. Phillips takes the front spot, double slaps it down. Siggins gets his hands on the ball, just a high up and under that drifts towards the boundary line. Off hands and kept in there. Now Keegan Ryan bends it round the corner. Sliding in, the relieving mark. Taken in defence back there by Poland. His kick, not a particularly good one though. They've turned it over. Here's Keegan Wiley. Umpire spots a free kick. That will relieve the pressure as Nat Franklin just ran into a little bit of trouble, then ran into some more trouble. Forced the handball back there to Phil Bellchambers. Ugly looking kick. A little indecisive this from the Bombers. They keep a hold of the football by hand now. Back to Franklin. Tumbling kick up towards the wing, but he's turned it straight over to Preshaw. Only Preshaw defensive side of the wing. Spears one down the line for Green. Green wants to keep things moving. He'll send them inside the Ford 50 now. Driving kick, see a body. He's almost brought down by Alones. Holmes tries to claim the mark. He's brought down by Bell Chambers. The umpire calls for it. Loams to do the rucking for the Roos. Phillips takes front spot, wins it down off hands of Ryan. Sight to the line there. Works it back to the top of the square. Off hands, spills out the back. Martin, did he get boot to ball? Just got a piece of it. Snapping from the pocket of Loams. That shutdown somehow stays in play. Handball back to the dangerous area at the top of the square. Running in trouble with Hooker. Picking up and putting it over his shoulder there. But unable to find the target there. It's behind for the Roos, but... They've started this game pretty brightly, Bo. They certainly have. They're just surging it forward. And one thing I mentioned from Phillips, he can't really get front spot in, in the ruck. Mathley's not, not going to be as strong as him, so it's going to be really interesting to see if he can get the front spot, Mathley, and get first use. Tilly turns away with it. Got it to Sutton. Sutton drew a man, gave it back to Siggins. Wanted to return the ball. Wasn't really an option, so just tumbled it looking for the return. Sutton does really well there to apply the pressure to Glover. Slipped it out the back to Cleary. Cleary's handball straight to Siggins, tries to deal there with Hanslow, who escorts him over the line with a little help. He'll be tossed in, and so they're looking to be physical with uh, Sam Siggins there early. Ryan and Hanslow, applying the pressure, they know what a key player he's going to be for the Bombers. Still yet to score in this one. Smith doing the ruck work now, palmed it down, running over the top of it was Norton. Burring in after it, Fletcher Hooker. On top of him is Howard. The umpire has dived on top of it. Free kick going the way of the ruse. And uh, Liam Howard at halfback. It's the moving, sends the ball wide. Spoil came from behind from Suki. And he escorts Paprotny out of play. Looks like it might be Keegan Ryan have the job on Sam Siggins today. He'll obviously rotate forward and through the midfield. Smith takes front spot, palms down boundary side. Boscott putting some pressure on there. With the Roos to come away with the football though. Hanslow manufactures a kick towards the half forward line. That'll be over the shoulder. A free kick surely going the way of Martin. A bit of a scrap early on in this one. The Roos, they've done all the scoring thus far. Tyler Martin, half back. See a lot of options he loves, so he'll be forced to kick along to a contest. Overall, Cowan's heads and out of play. Seven and a half minutes gone, and obviously only the one goal and one behind scored, so it's really scrappy out there. The ball hasn't really moved from the, the half forward line for Lauderdale, uh, for Clarence, I should say, to to Lauderdale's forward 50. It's kind of just staying in that middle part. Yeah, it's been this uh, new side wing with all the action that's been on as Baxter Norton bursts through the middle trying to change all that. He swings the ruse forward, but again, they've turned it over. Martin had a lot of that. The mark will be paid. Pretty sure knocking it out of his hands late on. So Martin busy early on here. All the bombers. He might be forced to just kick long to a contest. That's what he does. And Smith did well, but then didn't complete the mark. Sweeping onto it, Riley Hooker through traffic now. Tumbles it towards Phillips, who gets up and brings it down. 
And he'll be right on the paint of 50. He'll look confident, wants to square it up. A leading Siggins presents. And that is silver service from Phillips. And a chance for Siggins to cut the deficit to one. Interesting, eh? They've gone Hayden Smith and Andrew Phillips rotating through the forward line and then Siggins as well. So it's really... If they can get Hayden Smith down there as well, it's really a three-pronged forward line. And you just saw there Phillips, silver service, and we'll be rotating through the midfield and the forward line, I suspect. Well, there was a lovely ball use there. Just put it out into space and not going to stop. Siggins, when he's given a look like that, nothing the defender could do. So... Their first real attempt at goal of the afternoon, the Bombers. Sam Seggins drives it just wide of the mark. Put off the boot, just faded late. Through for just the minor score. And a six-point ball game, a bit of a let-off there for the Roos. Winslow calling for it near side, but Wiley will go out. Far side instead, the kick wasn't a great one. Made Cooney work for it. Flicked back over the top, gathered in there by McManus. McManus... Gets round one, gets boot to ball. He'll send it into the pocket. Searching ball spoiled away by Fisher. Did well to see it away from Walsh. Throw in. He's playing forward as well. Bryce Walsh, he usually would have him in the midfield. He'll come to the forward stoppage now, though. Usually very good around the stoppages, Bryce Walsh. Is Mapley up against Smith in the ruck contest. Smith gets rid of him on a down. Great tackle there. Saving tackle in the end. And Bryant will call for it. Thanks to Norton. The defensive work there. Looking out Franklin. And down by Mapley. Boss got trying to bust through, but he's claimed immediately. And the umpires pinged him red hot there. Said to use the pride to try and fend him off, I suppose. Maru's rewarded. Short kick. Finds Glover at halfback. A little indecisive, James Glover. But it's great ball use in the end, and he finds Hanslow in the corridor. The Roos just slow play at that. Wide ball now, might let Phillips in. Loams able to gather it. Swing it up towards the half forward line. Wasn't a good kick, but bounced favourably. Handball back into traffic. Pressure being applied here. Pretty sure. Coming away with it was Tilly. Tilly swings it long up there towards Smith. Takes the mark. And a precise kick finds Walsh. 70 from home, Bryce Walsh. Can he find a target inside the Ford 50? He's just short there of Siggins. Boss got in there trying to crash his way through. Handball came from Cleary, but the umpire's whistle had gone for a high contact on Thor Boscott. Just the way he plays, Thor Boscott. Down on his knees early, trying to get the ball at every contest. Even there, you can see it. Big pick up for Waterdale, I must add. He, he was a star when he was in the TSL as well, and then he moved to the SFL with Signet. An even better star there, obviously a two-time premiership coach there. I'm very glad to be able to call upon him. And he's certainly a, a no-nonsense customer for the boss got tough as they come. You saw that there, body on the line stuff. An opportunity to level the scores here in the 12th minute. He sets out from about 40 out. And he is just off to the right. So a miss either side. The Bombers two behinds. The Roos leading one goal one. Doesn't look like too much wind down there. So I thought that would be a factor. Maybe just a, a miss kick. Well, quite often is uh, in the games uh, here at the tip. But not today. Perfect conditions. That one charged down. Disastrous coming out of defence. They might be able to recover it. But Siggins is lurking there. Handball flicked across by Howard. Still under pressure here. Eventually, the umpire will call for it. Just a little too casual trying to exit defensive 50 there, LaRue's. Smith asserting himself at the contest. Boss got running past it. Smith following up. He's claimed by Preshaw. He brings the big Ruckman down. He's the Bombers just uh, a spell of pressure in forward 50 here. So a scrap off the ball. Bit of argy bargy there. McManus getting involved for the Bombers. Smith now. Rucking against McGee. Trying to get rid of a glover, but besieged and claimed immediately. Half sledding out there at the moment. A congested game around the ball. Smith and McGee once more. Can anyone take clean possession? It's flicked out. The handball found its way to Tilly. Tilly swept it across to Hanslow. Hanslow bumped off it, though, by Perkins. Eventually, it's 
Snap towards goal, and there it is. The bowlers get their first of the afternoon. Something out of absolutely nothing there. Just whacking it off the net with Tilly. And he's kicked a remarkable first goal for his side this afternoon. Great goal there. Something out of nothing, really. They were, they were pushing and pushing and pushing Waterdale, and they finally let the break through. They're, they're in front by one point. But it's still been a really scrappy game, obviously. A few repeat stoppages will, will do that. Obviously, one team's got to get, get the clearance, and on that, that occasion, it was ordered up. Well, they just kept it locked in there, and Tilly, I think, was just trying to clear the area, and he caught it very swiftly and suddenly swung through for a goal. It really was something out of nothing. So the Bombers get reward for their effort here and take the lead. Here's Nat Franklin, who's brought down in a great tackle from Norton. Got him cold, holding the footy. Influential early backs to Norton, as you'd expect. And he'll send them deep into the forward line here. Malomes couldn't quite bring it down. Green trying to gather, now forced to tackle, as was pre-shaw. They force another stoppage. Phillips to Ruck against Malomes, unopposed in the end, Phillips. Played a little one-two, then swung a kick around the corner. Floats over the head, though, of Hooker. Out the back, Sutton, the whistle's blown. And brought back for a bomber's free kick. And they'll try and send this one up towards the half-forward line. Your body's there. Siggins with a little shove. Gets away with it. Just showing strength there, Siggins. And this is well within his range. He's a booming kick, Siggins. He wheels out and gives it a thump. It's drifting, drifting. Sammy Siggins for 55. Smashes it through. And the Bombers get their second of the afternoon. 2-2-14, leading the Ruse 1-1-7. What a kick that was. Easy as you like, Bo. Wow. That, to start off, the bodywork first on Tom Cleary, who's not, who's not an easy guy to manhandle under the ball. And then the, the runaround kick. Probably follows Clarence, I'd have someone on that run around. Just, just place behind the man on the mark. Obviously, you know Siggins is going to try and load from there. And boy, what, what a thumping kick to get Lauderdale's second goal. So a seven-point lead for the home side. They were pretty jumped in the first five minutes. Clarence uh, having the better of that. But since then, they've been well on top. And they get another goal. Phillips whacking that one down. Holmes, though, there for Clarence. Just got his kick away in time towards the half-forward line. Spinning out of trouble was Baxter Norton. Silky as ever as he sends them in the green direction. Was that a little push in the back? Umpire spots it. And it'll be a free kick to Josh Green, who we know is very much a goal kicker. Back in the TSL this year, Josh Green from Lindisfarne. Obviously, pretty good AFL career, to be honest. He would have played a bit with Andrew Phillips, I reckon. But Destiny, maybe I'm not sure about that, but he's a known goal kicker. He goal sneak. I think he won the best in Ferris last year for Linda's Farn, so interesting to see how he goes here. And Green looking to cut the margin back to one point. It's real 4 a four they've had in a while. He leans back, Green. And he's offline. He want to score only. Margin an even goal. Poland from fullback. The kick in duties. Saunters out and launches it up towards the wing. Almost reeled in there by Franklin. Not quite. Pretty sure crashing in. Strength from Phillips. Juggling away there, Franklin. Trying to bust his way through their bell chambers. Now the handball on the outside to Sutton. So damaging is Sutton. He sends them towards Siggins. He was being held there, Sam Siggins. That's uh, just the, the perception, perceived threat, really. Touching a little early there. Keegan Wiley, and tell you what, Siggins, after that last gig, he might just be fancying himself again here. He's going to wheel out to the right and give it a thump again. Gives it a ride. The distance, not a problem. The accuracy was. But there might just be a slight wind advantage to that end, I think, Bo, because that ball is carrying a good mm. 60 metres. Thumping. That, that was a thumping kick. Maybe... I'm not sure what was on in the forward line. Maybe he could have lowered the eyes, but it's, it's Sam Sigan. He, he can do anything, really. He's got license, doesn't he? After that last one, there was no hesitation. He marked that 65 out and went, yeah, I'll have a look. <laughs> so, Why that, not as well? He, he got the distance pretty easily, really. Yeah. 
Just not quite the accuracy on that occasion as this one's kicked up towards the contest. Siggins there once more, scooping it out there with Sutton, but the ruse will take it away. The handball eluded Tompkins, though. They lost it to Phillips. Phillips has time to just chip a little kick out to Sutton, flicked it over the top to Siggins. Siggins launching from 60 again. It's drifting oh. offline again. Well, he's getting plenty of shots from uh, this pocket. Pocket outside 50, it should be said. <laughs> Great composure from Andrew Phillips. He it was a pretty tight contest. Well, not oh, got him as we go back to live play. Sorry about to cut you off there. Thought we were about to have holding the ball. Back to you in a, a second there on Phillips' kicking skills as this one goes over the top to Poland. He gathers it, gave it across to Suki. Suki, not a great ball, that one. Brought uh, Tompkins into play. The numbers favoured the Bombers, though. And Fletcher Hooker's able to send them inside the Ford 50. Just trailing behind Smith. Able to jug the mark is clear. Yeah, just that, that contest there. There wasn't many people coming at him, but it was a really tight knit. And just to compose the level head to find someone in that, in that position was great for Phillips. Yeah, not something you usually associate with the big rapping, is it? But that's twice today he's shown really good composure by foot. Great ground ball as well. He, he can get down low. This one's over the head there of Racket. The kick's been blown. Go you know, the way of Racket. So an opportunity to send the Bombers inside Ford 50 again. Short kick finds Riley Hooker called to play on. So he wheels off to the right and then just sets it up into the Ford pocket. Spoil came from behind. Yeah, from Gridley. Now an opportunity just worked off his kick was McManus, but it was a pretty blatant push in the back, and he'll get the free kick and the opportunity to go back from 40 out. Not a lot of salty in that one, but No arguing, really. That was, that was pretty uh, pretty obvious, I reckon. Just came late to the, to the tackle and unfortunately gave away a free kick when they were still surging all day. So it might be a good result for Clarence, even just if he misses this. I suppose the defender will tell you he's going to kick a goal regardless. So, yeah, put him off that. See if he can nail the set shot. So, Robbie McManus here. Trying to extend the Bombers' lead to 14 points. He'll kick from 40 out. The umpire again forced to dance. And off the line, two goals, five. The Bombers just missing a few opportunities here in the first term. Probably should be further ahead on the scoreboard. Just a nine-point lead to show for what's been a pretty dominant quarter outside the first five minutes. That's a lovely kick. A lot of kicks from outside 50 as well. You just think maybe they could lower their eyes a little bit more and find an easier option. Trotney sends the ruse up towards the wing. Flying high there. He'll take the mark, busting through Perkins. Put the handball out to Winter. Tight to the line, screwed around the corner straight to James Glover. Glover will opt to switch things up. Risky ball, almost invites Sutton. His teammate under pressure, but they're up to the challenge. And now they can smash it towards Josh Green at half forward. The spoil came from Bell Chambers. Now a play. Might be one of those days we, we can't really judge till half time how much the wind factoring into this one. As you mentioned, they've been very happy to let fly from 60 out. Yeah. So it suggests there is a bit of wind to play. I have to tell from uh, our location in the bunker, but uh, might just be favouring the Bombers' end for mine. Phillips takes front position. One, it's down to Sutton, but he's immediately claimed. Pressure from Jack Dolliver. Tilly first to this one, looks to bounce off, but his handball turned over, gave it straight to Paprotny. Paprotny slaps it on the boot into the forward pocket. The numbers there favouring the Bombers, and Green gets across and escorts Finn Racket out of play. Watch Phillips get their front position here as well, they can't can do it really. He's pretty, uh, pretty inexperienced ruckman, I reckon, so watch this. And it just works his way, and double fist towards the line. They'll go again. Why so dangerous, Phillips? Even he didn't get front spot there, but he worked his way around McGee and still got the hit out. A big learning experience for the young Roos Rucks today. Certainly a real position of strength in this Bombers lineup is... 
Phillips takes it out of the ruck. He slapped it straight to Paprotny. Paprotny put it on the boot. Poland there, almost juggling the marker. Loams. Then he's forced to defend, and he lays a good tackle. And a stoppage inside Ford 50 going nowhere. Tyler Martin. The ruse. First time since the opening moments with a, a bit of time in attack here. Tackle laid by Jack Preacher on this occasion. The full pressure has been pretty good from them. They won't mind repeat stoppages either, Clarence, because it's been living in, in Lauderdale's end for, for most of the quarter. So repeat stoppages is a good, good option. Phillips out of the ruck, but the umpire spots an infringement. It's going to be a free kick to the ruse. It might be uh, James Glover. In a factor? No. And McGee in the ruck, so Phillips is cold. An opportunity for Conor McGee to, uh, to put one back here. Cut the margin to three points in the shadows of quarter time. It's really big because we've talked about Lauderdale's ruck advantage. To be able to get a goal out of this situation would be huge. Can McGee convert? He can't. The opportunity goes begging. And that's just the type of miss you can't afford. Certainly not eight, eight behinds collectively in the game so far. It's really interesting. This one's marked by Paprotny. The Roos can go right back inside Ford 50 here. He drills a low ball. Almost took the mark. Fell there to Holmes. Shaking free. Holmes wants to straighten up with the banana, but he couldn't quite bend it back enough. And two is offline. One goal for the Roos. Interesting. You see the goal on play there. Mark Holmes, James Brella. So just a fun little fact. Very Tasmanian, that. So a seven-point lead for the Bombers late in the first quarter. Sidden's directing traffic says, head wide here, Bell Chambers. That's just what he does. Kicks up towards the contest. Phillips almost able to bring it down. Manus' handball was smothered, but fell into the path of Tilly. Tilly there, showing some agility. Skips out of the right, then with a low worm burner, found its way up towards Hooker. Was clean below his knees, Hooker. Sends it deep, seconds from behind. Gets the better of Keegan Ryan. And we'll go back to kick his second. Can't let him run and jump. Keegan Ryan there, just played front position, with, which usually is not a bad option. But Sam Siggins, let him run and jump it. Height, agility, you're going to see it. Most times him take the mark. Yeah, it felt like Ryan kind of had the had the sit, and then in the end, Siggins just too big for him from behind, just judged it better. And Ryan unable to hold the space. Siggins, kick one. We're back. The second of the afternoon. Looks good off the boat. He is good. They have their third. He has his second. It's 3 5 23, the Bombers. They lead this one by 13 points as we tick towards the first change. More routine kick there from Sam Siggins. Not, not all the way out from 50, so you probably expect him to slot that nine times out of 10. There and again, Waterdale just able to get the defensive transition. Obviously, a bit of time in Clarence's forward 50 there, and then getting it out of the, the defensive 50 from there, they just, they just surged. Which is a common theme in, in AFL now, the, just the surge, kick it forward and, and find someone down there most times. Just, uh, well, to get uh, almost an old school uh, Pagan's Paddock, Sigan's Paddock type operation there, just two players in the defensive 50 there. As Phillips reaches up, wins it down, but brought down was Franklin. Tackle from Keegan Ryan. Set and go again here. Mapley up against Phillips. Phillips with the leap, won it down again to Franklin around the corner. His kick. Tumbles out into space. First to it uh, was Bush, and he got cleaned up. Had to be strong. Did well, Bush. Handball back inside to Mapley. But he fell over a little bit of time as he sends them towards the half forward line. That's a really strong mark, and then quickly moved on. Not a great handball for Bealey. Put him under all sorts of pressure. Fortunately for him, the umpire has plucked a holding free kick. Daniel Cooney hesitates for a moment, then just sets it up towards the forward line. Two on one there against Holmes. Spoiled out towards Hanslow, trying to gather it was Winter. Back inside with Sutton, and there's the siren win the first quarter. So the Bombers by 13 points. An intriguing opening quarter here for season 2024. Clarence started strongly, and there on the, the Bombers pretty good. Reasonable value for their 13-point lead. Perhaps should be further ahead, Con. They certainly should be. 
goal kick is Sam Siggins with two, Sam Tilly with one for Lauderdale. And for the visitors, Keegan Ryan getting that goal within 20 seconds. So I haven't really got much reward for effort Clarence as of yet. It's been living in Lauderdale's forward 50 for most of this first quarter. So it'll be a really interesting second quarter, Joy. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be back uh, with the second quarter for you from the tip soon. But a good start from the hosts here. Plenty of hype around both these sides heading into this final season. So far, the Bombers will be uh, the happier of the two teams. We'll be back shortly with caller number two, Andrew Calling and Bo Downham here on the call for you. Opening day of the TSL season. We'll be back shortly.
So back for the second quarter. Here at Skybus Oval. It's the home side. Bombers leading this one. 3-5 to 1-4. We'll wait and see what uh, the wind uh, does this quarter. Informed by our wonderful cameraman, uh, Mr McCarthy down there. But just slight, uh, slightly to the left of screen being favoured, but nothing too significant. So, Which is what we suspect, really. Yeah. It's pretty obvious down at the tip. The, the, the wind is going to favour the left side, so we'll see if Auto can make an impact to right of screen because all the goals are scored. Well, three goals to one down in that end, so interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, so we'll see uh, the 13 point uh, gap is uh, perhaps not too bad as far as players are concerned. If they can start uh, getting some of those distance efforts that we saw from Lord Hayland for number one, they're quite happy to have a shy from kind of 60 metres out frequently in that first turn. Let's see if Clarence follows suit here in the second. Just around the grounds quickly, one session three to Northern Bombers 47. So, each. Interesting. That's significant. So both Bombers ahead early on here. And they'll get the first clear into the second quarter. Franklin can get a free kick. Chance to send them forward. There's Clarence who got their goal in the opening 20 seconds of the first quarter. And another one after that. Just over the top of Smith on this occasion. Walsh applying some pressure. Well, it's hot the kitchen at the moment with the ball come out. Another tackle laid. He tossed up inside the forward 50. Looks like he's playing deep full forward, Sam Siggins, when he is going forward. Going to kick two goals in that first quarter. Smith will take this ruck contest. Went down to Bosket, through the hands there. Now Tilly. Tilly gets his kick away, but it's just drifting off line. Three goals, six of the Bombers move along to. In that first quarter, Sam Tilly had an impact around the ball. Keegan Wiley will have a bounce and drive them up towards the wing with a booming kick, but he turned it over. Dropping one he probably should have had there, Poland. Suki couldn't gather cleanly. A Loams, he slung off it. They keep the ball in motion, get it to Norton. Norton's kick charged down there by Poland. They'll get another crack at it, just slapped on the boot, but again turned over. Finn Rackett intercepting this time. He'll chip it sideways for Tilly. Tilly will try and execute the switch. He goes all the way back. He's uh, back in Martin. Martin over the top for Ned Shaw. Important early, Tyler Martin, when they were really surging Clarence. A steady presence down there, certainly, as this one's stabbed up towards Phillips, who started brightly, as you'd expect, from the boom recruit. Shaw will bend this one back into play. Just keeps it in the confines. and Off hands for a ball in. Scott there was the target. New faces in this Bombers lineup. Underachieving a little last year. High expectations for them this season. Baxter Norton again. Playing tackles, doing the grunt work in this Clarence midfield. The three hooker boys have come back. They, hot, they rate them really highly at Waterdale. Slap down boundary side. And going nowhere was Ryan. Sam Tilly wrapping him up. Vice like grip. Phillips slaps it back inside. Ryan releases. Trying to get the kick away. Dolliver tumbles around the corner. Pretty sure he would have done really well to keep it in, but just going over the line there. Clean below his knees there was Ollie Pretty sure. A lot of talent in both teams. Yeah. Really, really. Team to improve off last season. You see Josh Green there move up to the stoppage, which I was actually thinking of saying. Get a little bit of fast flowing movement there to maybe think of putting Josh Green in there. So, that stuff from Spear Ryan. Pretty sure knocks it back into the corridor. Franklin. His handball to the opposition, though. Hands low. Pretty sure gathered by Bell Chambers. It's tight, it's congested, and it's going nowhere. They'll have another bounce. Plenty of stoppages in this one so far. A physical game out there. Slapped towards Bosket. Green from behind. Again, unable to take clean possession. Bosket somehow gets his kick out of there. 
Chasing it backwards was Glover. Spilled out behind for Harry Fisher. Fisher turns it back towards Cooney. Just gets his kick away. Boskett turning. And then out of play once more. We're all just kind of stuck in this little quadrant of the ground at the moment. Similar shades of last quarter, really. The, the ball getting stuck in this little patch, middle of the ground, near the forward 50 to the right end. Lewis works his way to the front, won it down to Hooker. Just got a kick away. Shaw, Hamble back inside to Perkins. He's buffered it off it. Phillips, and now Perkins again trying to crash through. Bell Chambers, the bottom of that pack. Right calls for it once more. Great pressure from Clarence. Six jumpers around that ball, trying to all win it. Holding the line here as the Rucks go at each other rather than the football. It spills the way of the ruse. There's finally some clean air. They swing it out towards half forward. Nobody there, though. Just Finn Rackett, who takes the easiest of intercepts. All the Bombers. Just to settle things down, he'll hit down the line to the contest. Floating towards the line. Did it stay in? It did not. And the ruse ball on centre wing. Ryan drives them towards half forward. Wasn't a convincing kick though. Tackle from Pre Shaw sees it spilled away of Green. Got the handball out, but might have been a hold there, just lingering. A free kick will go the way of Tyler Martin. He punches one on the left, right into the corridor. That might open things up. Perkins couldn't quite take the mark though. Then Liam Howard back the other way. Off hands to Baxter Norton. Norton driving the ruse forward towards Green in a battle there with Martin. Spilt out towards Holmes, but Martin's there once more and he'll repel. Please defensive 50 off the chest of Hooker. Howard applying pressure. And he locked up once more. Great stuff in defence there for Martin. He looked great down in defence really for Waterdale so far. And he's been a rock back there. That's Tyler Martin. Phillips won that boundary side. First to it though, Paprotny able to prop back onto his right and send the ruse inside 50. Green caught from behind, applied the pressure. Almost received it back from McGee, but again, it'll be Bell Chambers to take it away. And they just keep it in to Franklin. Franklin got the to Tilly. Tilly works them along the wing. Just eludes Boscott. Now out after that is Glover. Boscott just worried him out of it a little bit. Pretty sure. Handball back in towards Paprotny. Couldn't quite gather it. And Boscott is locked up by Glover. Tossed up. Phillips with strength. Down to Tilly, but he's brought down immediately. Not sure locking that one in. Rinse and repeat. Phillips, lovely piece of ruck work. Won it down to McManus. Just got rid of it and then slapped back into the corridor. They'll send it wide, floating over the head of Sutton. First to it, uh, Cleary. And it will trickle out of play for a ball in. So a real scrappy second quarter here as much as the first was by Dallin. Sure is. It just it's, it seems like it's really hard to, to move from end to end, really. Um, and then when they get positions like this it, it's good for Clarence to get it get out and then it comes back in it's, it's a really interesting game Smith just has a volley out of the ruck just extends the leg and kicks it uh, straight out of bounds on the full very similar shades to the first quarter I don't often see it's, it's been it's basically panned out not the exact same it's really similar so the Roos deep in defence here, trying to get something going. Kicked a goal since the 22nd mark of this game. Short ball finds Bealey. Directing traffic and then sends it down the line. Phillips backing back with the flight and takes a strong mark. The big Ruckman starting to make his presence felt. He sends this one down the line. His kicking skills have been very sharp too and he finds a marking target here in McManus. Okay. So Robbie McManus looks up. Plenty of bodies ahead of him. The Roos pretty well set in defence. And he'll be forced to kick to a contest. He goes yeah, Sigan's direction, just trapped behind a little. And umpire spots a free kick. It'll go the way of the Bombers. It's going to be Campbell Hooker. Angle the distance against him. And it takes something special from here, Campbell Hooker. 
He wheels in the left, sells a little bit of candy, straightens up and drives it across the face. A minor score only. It's Campbell Hooker thought we were going to get something special there. Got around the men on the mark, but didn't complete the job. Wiley. Thumping kick to Bealey. Good hands there from James Bealey. Again, just forced to slow down. All set up behind the ball. Flying from behind was Dolliver. Pushed towards the line. Walked off at Ryan. And ball to Walsh. Walsh back to Poland. Poland just gets his kick away. Some slick hands there. Found its way there inside. And now almost taking the mark. Gapen, but just worked off the footy. And by spots and over the shoulder. And will relieve the pressure. Clarence's ball. Here's a lot half back. Sends it across the face and they'll try and switch things up here. Get the ball out into open space. Some hard running. But it was an ill-directed kick just pitched inside and it'll be tossed into play. Trying to make something happen there, Daniel Kearney. It was a lung-busting run, but a good kick is getting into it off the ball there. He hated Smith. Smith and Howard. Found his way back into this team. He missed out on a few opportunities towards the back end of last season. Phillips wins that one down. Norton buffered it off it. We're in there for the Bombers. Phillips again with strength, but won it down to Tompkins. Tompkins sends Clarence forward. It's out the back. It'll be a foot race there. Can McGee give a nervous chase? He'll be Poland with time to steady and then turn the ball straight over to Tompkins. Not uh, composed play there from William Boland. Had a couple of options and he turns it straight over. He might have played on there. And Tompkins, I thought so too, bro. But Tompkins given the chance for the set shot and he needs to make this count because a real holding pattern the first 10 minutes of this quarter. He'd kick this one. Of course, the wind going that end, so he'd probably favour him. Cut the margin back to nine points. First goal of the quarter. It's an ugly looking kick off the boot. Won't make the journey. And off hands, four behind. One goal, five plays, three goals, seven. A lot of behinds to this end of the ground. It's maybe the players are just finding it a little bit hard to judge. So still we wait for a goal in this quarter as that one almost gets out behind the back of the zone. Clarence should be able to take the ball away, storming away with it was James Glover, but he runs out of real estate under pressure from Tilly. And it's proving difficult to come by here despite uh, conditions being favourable. Early season rust perhaps. He's back to Norton. Pops back onto the left, sends it up towards the half forward line. Clean was pre sure, but then he's reeled in there by Bell Chambers. And Martin, sorry. Continues to be a big wall back there defensively. McGee gets the better of Phillips on this occasion. Tumbles a kick in towards the half forward line. Taken a little high there, I reckon. Advantage paid and taken by Hanslow. Hanslow goes it for the Rouge. Slaps it on the boot, and they needed that one. Tyson Hanslow gets the first of the second quarter and the Ruse back within eight points. Again, something out of nothing there for the Ruse. Just great fight, determination to get that ball, win it, surge it forward. Hanslow has a great kick, sizes up the goals and splits the middle. So, first goal of the quarter. Detroit, only five goals for the game so far. I feel like that was a really important one, though, just to get it back within eight points manageable if after the first kind of 15 minutes the first goal goes the other way and suddenly you're 20 points down in a game where you've only kicked one goal, it can start to look a bit daunting. So I think that was really important. Clarence got that one. So back to the middle. Phillips wins it down. Walsh moving into the engine room. Sweeps the handball over the top to Phillips. Dexterous there is the big fella, showing some agility. He's kicked out in front of Winter. Some time. 
Now looking on Woods and they send a searching kick. Franklin can't quite bring it. Woodley now be there at half forward for the Bombers. Beautiful sunshine. Yeah, that's Skybus to start the season, this final season of TSL football. These teams with premiership aspirations as Phillips tries to release the handball. That's going to be a throw against Gridley. Trying to make something happen. Dispose of it legally for a kick to the ruse and a half back. Gapen with a risky kick, invited in Franklin, spoiled it down to Boscott. Boscott with clean hands, got it to Siggins. Siggins onto the left for his third. He's offline. Slick hands from Thor Boscott oh, there. Yeah, absolutely. Thought Sam Siggins might have had his third there, but again, Thor Boscott has not looked out of place at all. Obviously, SFL is, is a bit of a, not a downgrade, but I should have really worded his TSL as a bit of an upgrade there. And, Hasn't looked out of place. Good mark taken there. And the bottles will go back inside for 50. Matt Franklin with a strong pair of hands. He just sets it up deep inside for 50. Oh. Siggins roving and snapping and again missing. Here he goes, nine, the Bombers. And Siggins, he's had plenty of opportunities in this one. He certainly has. It's, uh, I think. He'll get one soon. It's two, two, two goals four now, I think, he's got. Yeah. It's been a, a monster day so far. Yeah, again, he's looked really dangerous down forward. So it's obviously working for, for Lauderdale so far. Yeah, last year was often you'd love to be able to clone him, have one in the ruck and one in the forward line. Well, now with Phillips, they, they kind of have that luxury. They might be able to play him forward uh, a little bit more this year. It's really difficult to find a matchup for him as well because he's so agile. Tall, can mark it. You really have to have a big defender, but... An agile defender who can run as well. Phillips wins it down towards Franklin, slaps it on the boot, floating up towards half forward. There might have been a hold there on Ratcliffe. Umpire says play on on hands and knees. Ratcliffe scoops it out. Backs to Norton applying some pressure. Umpire calls for it. Gets rid of his opponent, but fighting on was McGee. Handball out in the space towards Boskett. Takes it. Weaving one way, spinning a full pirouette there. Then flick the handball, but straight to the opposition. He cuffed it up to Cooney. Cooney with some time to turn and slap it up towards Preshaw. Drifting in was Martin. Martin locking it up once again. An immovable object down there. So far today, Tyler Martin. He's been beaten in the contest yet. I don't think he has. He's, he's looked really dangerous down, down back for him. In some good work in the clinches from Franklin. Slapped on the boot by Phillips up towards Gridley. Towed away there, Wiley. And now Cooney applying some pressure. Well done, though. The release the handball to Bell Chambers. Bell Chambers to Hooker. Hooker with a stinging kick, but it was a poor one. Straight to Dolivo who chops it off. Good idea. I just don't think he saw the Clarence jumper there. One of the peripheries just ghosted in, took the intercept, and that and spoiled away nicely. And a play for a throw-in. So just struggling to exit half back at the moment, the Roos. It's going to slip down the half of Wardell. So Clarence have got some work to do. They need someone to really take the game on off half back and start surging it forward. McGee and Phillips. Crashing through Walsh. Franklin in there, handball came from Ratcliffe, did well, released it to McManus. McManus couldn't quite find his target, leading back there, Wiley. Turns onto his right, kept it low, punched one up there and found Poprotny. Eventually it trickles out of play. again, wins it down Franklin slapped it on the boot tumbling ball, somehow getting a kick away was Hooker, deep towards Smith, trapped behind, couldn't quite get it oh and Glover turns into trouble he's met firmly by Gridley another ball up as the pressure continues to build 
Imagine being a Lauderdale midfielder. You'd be licking your lips at the silver service that Andrew Phillips is giving you in the middle around the contest. It's just, it's just great to see. And Smith to take this one, though, and he taps it down and looks like they'll go once more as Holmes locks that up. Plenty of defending here in the second term. The Roos holding on for the time being with a damn well break. As the Argy Vargy continues. It can often happen in these contested games where you keep having repeat stoppages, these coming togethers. Plenty of feeling out there. Smith takes front position. McGee reaches over the top, wins it down. And again, they'll have another ball up. A stoppage-laden game of football, this. Both try slap it away. Sigurd somehow got a kick out of there. Flicking it over the head. It would have been a remarkable goal from Campbell Hooker. It's just offline. 3-10. That one a pretty tough chance, though, given he wasn't even looking at the goals. It would have, been, it would have brought the house down at Waterdale, I reckon. Just to, after a few stoppages to get that goal there, it would have been, would have been a massive goal. Losing his footing was the Loams. Allowed in Ned Shaw, usually a good user, and he sends this one in towards Franklin. Balks and gets around the man on the mark. Then he'll send him deep over the head of Smith. Backing back, the relieving mark. He is taken by Howard. Clear defensive 50 again. Trotney and a Loams through the hands of a Loams. Hands low, released it. Now perhaps they'll try and get some bounce off half back. Cooney set a task and again eludes him. The game just being locked in this forward half from the Bombers. The margin stays at 11. Now what we might see is, is an extra forward. So Bryce Holmes there coming up the ground to try and take that mark and just, just provide an option for, for some run to come behind him. Maybe because they just haven't looked dangerous at all getting it out of the forward 50 of Lauderdale Clarence. They've been uh, in pretty deep here. Good tackle laid by James Holmes again. Happening today, James Holmes. Had a good season last year. Phillips slaps it back centrally. Just running past it was Hooker. Hands low. His handball away. Spills to Holmes. Holmes just escapes Boscott. And leaving it behind, though, was Tompkins. Hands low goes back in on hands and knees. Scooped it out of there. Ryan... I'm going to take a little high. Pressure came in. Umpire says he'll have it. Taking into applying the pressure there. Chris Stimey did any attempts to run it out of half back here, the Bombers. Phillips oh! took it out of the contest, was dispossessed. Ryan, clever handball. That might release something. Paprotny drives them forward. Mark was dropped, but right into the path of Suki. Over a couple of situations. And a pretty ugly one straight out of bounds insufficient intense as the umpire well perhaps I think it was just a ball kick more than anything but uh, umpire pings him as well as there was no one in the vicinity There's Max Gapen by hand they try and break some lines with some run and carry here Glover set up kick into the 450 green good pair of hands and his side they get a goal here they could cut the margin back to five points good you mate they just spread well there, Clarence. It's as simple as that. They just spread, got the hand pass. Green, two on one, did really well to mark it. Obviously, he's not the tallest guy playing on, I think it was Phil Bell Chambers there. He's a good defender, so great mark taken there from, from Josh Green. So can Green find his side's second of the quarter? He sends it on its way. It looks pretty good from Josh Green. He splits the middle, and Clarence... They've kicked their second of the quarter. The only two goals off the term have gone their way. They've gone forward, I reckon, twice for their two goals. The game has all been played almost exclusively in the Bombers' forward line, yet Clarence making inroads into this league, but It's an extraordinary game, Joey, to be honest. Three goals, ten. Lauderdale to 3-5. Clarence, you probably would have thought that Lauderdale taking their chances, they'd be two or three goals in front because Clarence just haven't had the options down forward, but... As you said, every time they've gone forward, they've been they've been actually putting scoreboard pressure on. Two goals to the quarter is simply remarkable of 23 minutes and 40 seconds of football. And back to the middle, Phillips 
Wins it down, dives on, scoop the handball, super stuff there to Tilly. Tilly with speed, he'll charge out of the square. He'll have a shot, it's Tilly. It's touched on the line. Three goals, 11. The Bombers, they just can't take their chances. It was exciting play through the middle. Tilly's been very lively, just, just short. And an even six points, six straight behinds the difference at the moment. seen too much of that kind of run through the stoppages in this game. It's very much been a contest to contest, contested game as the Ruse now scoop the handball back over the top under pressure. Preshaw just gets rid of it. Tompkins collected. It's going to be a free kick going the way of Jack Preshaw. Leaving the pressure. Doesn't have an immediate option ahead to. And he'll drive it down the wing towards his brother. Spoiled game and how the play it goes. So much to win. It's even a fact in our draw. There obviously isn't much, but it's more just, just trying to kick it forward and getting the free plays around the contest to, to get the handball receive out and get it forward. Phillips again having his way in the ruck. Tap that one down, but it's straight to a Clarence player again. Hanslow slaps it up towards Green. Couldn't quite juggle the mark. Racket doing well. Got it there to Bell Chambers. And support comes as they work it around the outside to Sutton. He slaps it up towards the half forward line. Strong mark, that one. An opportunity to send them inside 50 here, Hooker. Spills out the back. Who's going to be first to it? It's going to be Glover there for the ruse. Under pressure, he tumbled an ugly-looking kick out of there. Just bounced past Dolliver, but he's able to turn onto it. And they stream out of defence now, up towards the wing. Bell Chambers couldn't quite bring it in. Green brought to ground. And another stoppage is forced. Green just pushing up, trying to get himself involved here. Phillips... Chelsea's opposing Ruckman out of the way. And swing at that one was Napoli. Couldn't find his boot. Really interesting game, this. I'm not sure how, how it's going to go in the second half. Runs for what we're taking as Green works this one sideways for Hanslow. Spool came from behind. Hanslow goes back. He's brought down by Gridley. Spills out to Sutton. Sutton skips through the contest, but the holding the ball decision had already been paid to Preshaw. Wants to get things moving for the Ruse. Stabs a short little pass. Finds Preshaw of the Olive variety. He will send them further wide for Glover. Glover. Little chip over the top, keeping his feet wet. Stay in for Tompkins. It won't, it won't matter anyway, because there's the siren for half time. And at the main change, it is Lauderdale. Holding sway by six points. Probably should be further ahead, though. Three goals, 11 to three goals, five. They dominated that quarter by Downham, yet the only two goals went the way of the Roos. Certainly did. And again, we see the, pat, uh, the game being played on that patch of grass on closest to us here. They just haven't been able to get any consistency. Both teams really have not been able to get any consistency through the middle. We only really saw Chile take the game on in that little passage there. Both of your goal kickers quickly, all single goals to Clarence guys. Tyson Hanslow with one, got Josh Green with one, and Keegan Ryan with the opening goal of the game. Sam Siggins with two, and Sam Tilly with one. So no goal scored for Lauderdale that quarter. I think it's 11 behind, so simply remarkable. Yeah, I think a, a little more composure going forward inside the, the 450 and, and taking their chances will be the, the message from Alan Christensen at halftime. They, they should be winning this game, but uh, Clarence, uh, they're just hanging in there and they're certainly close enough. If they, can, uh, if they can improve a little in the second half, this is anyone's for the taking. It should be a, a really exciting second half. Headed your way, we'll be back in around about a quarter of an hour with that for you. Half time in the season opener here at Skybus Oval. It is the Lauderdale Bombers, three goals 11, leading the Clarence Aroos, three goals five.
sit up on the roof and lean up against that. Welcome back to Sky Bus Oval here for the third quarter. This big season opener between Lauderdale and Clarence. The final season of the Tasmanian State League. Two highly fancied outfits meeting here in round one. The early exchanges have gone the way of Lauderdale, although they probably should be further ahead. Three goals 11 leads, three goals five as we are set to begin the third quarter. I'm Andrew Cooley joining me on the call here. Bo down and Bo, what are you expecting from this second half? Hopefully a few more goals. It's uh, obviously a few more than what we had, which is five for the game, I think it is. And um, look, hopefully a little bit more free-throwing ball movement because contest to contest is what this game has produced so far. And hopefully we can see, cast your mind back to early in that second quarter, Sam Tilly bursting through the middle. I think we should see a li little bit more of that, a little bit more of an attacking game style here from both teams would be great to see, Drew. There have been plenty of stoppages for these guys to go at and Phillips begins the quarter with a decisive hit out into dispute though. Tilly turning into a tackle and wrapping him up hands low. Kicked a goal for Clarence in that second quarter. Kicked two goals to none despite being outplayed. Ryan handballs to Preshaw. Preshaw trying to burst through traffic. He's hauled down from behind, released it in time. The handball to Hooker. Hooker goes back inside and now driving up towards Smith. Spanked away from him. He toes it off the ground. He'll go back in here, the big fella. Handball was a good one. Found Tilly. Tilly has a shy from distance. Siggins in the goal square. Tumbles at home. He has his third. And Lauderdale get the fast start here in the third quarter. Again there, someone took the game on. Just drive it forward. We've seen that. We've already talked about it. It's the, it's the way that this game's going to be played. Most teams are going to try play that way and replicate each other. So just to get it forward... Siggins rarely ever going to lose a one-on-one -on -one battle duel. Yeah, he's put nicely to his advantage. Not too much Keegan Wiley could do. Taking the front position and floated out the back. And he gets his third from close range. Uh, going to be a real threat in that forward line. Three goals, four to his name already. He's got the volume, certainly, in terms of scoring opportunities. And this man's doing very nicely in the middle. Phillips, he wins the hit out down towards Hooker, but he's immediately taken down by Norton. It's not too much Ryan was in a bad position either. Usually front spot's fine, but Siggins to, to manhandle him out of that contest. Athlete and away in there. Perkins with a little hold on Norton. Hooker applying some pressure. Repeat stoppages was very much the order of the first half. Phillips flicks it out behind to Tilly. Shrugs the back nicely. Turns on to the right, slaps them inside towards Siggins again. Brought it to ground level. The numbers, though, were there with the ruse, and they're able to clear off half back. And the leading kick finds Preshaw. Turn inside. Just have to halt. Wait. Something to open up ahead of him eventually. Kicks down the line to a contest. The big men fly to Protney. First to the fall, sends him inside 50 towards the Loams. Couldn't quite bring it down. Suki got a fist in there. Pressure now being applied by Perkins. They force a stoppage. So already we're seeing Sam Chilly take the game on. He's going from contest to contest. He's going to try drive the ball forward. The question is who from Clarence is going to match Tilly? Phillips just worked underneath that one by Loams. Didn't get much purchase on the kick. Norton neither. Got beat to ball. Didn't clear the area. Now he's forced to apply a tackle on Hooker. Once again, the umpire will toss it up. One down by Phillips. Straight to Norton. Hooker has a hold of him. 
That might be holding the footy. Empire says he didn't have the opportunity to get rid of it. Phillips reaches over the top. Ryan doing some pressure. Trying to get it out of there, McManus. Umpire spots it. Give for a kick to McManus. Sets a high searching ball up towards the wing. Spoil came from Bealey, thumped it out. To the path of Gapen, has Cooney in support. Went further afield to Green. Green squaring ball to Hanslow, it's a good one. And Tyson Hanslow can go back and look to cut the margin back to six. Going for a second here, Tyson Hanslow. Hanslow get the response of the Roozer after here. Only in quarter at number three. He'll kick from about 35 out. No angle to speak of. It's underneath it a little. It works it back nicely. And the Roos get the goal there. Fourth of the afternoon. Hanslow second. It's 4-5 plays. 4-11. A six-point lead to the home side. Good Hanslow. And forward. I can't recall him playing a hell of a lot last year. <laughs> Not an in though, so maybe just playing with the Dev League, but he's looked lively up forward and a nice option for him is 4-11-35 to 4-5-29. Two goals in the opening four and a half minutes here. That's all we had in quarter number two. Maybe game just starting to open up a little in the second half. A real uh, stoppage laden slugfest in that first half. Uh, Phillips and Mapley again. Phillips wins it down, just bounced past Franklin. Norton onto it. Taken down from behind. Play on, says the umpire. Hooker burrowing in after that on top of him is Preshaw. Diving on top of him was Franklin. A wrestling match breaking out there on the ball. Uh, jumping on each other. Yeah, a bit argy bargy all day, really. You did mention it. We often see this one, it's pretty tight. A feeling out there, leaning over Phillips, one it down to a hooker, gets his kick around the corner. Swinging deep forward, bounces out the back. Who's first to it? Siggins leading in the foot race, gets there. But, uh, just seen away from him nicely by Liam Howard. Getting a fist in to see it out of play. Dangerous. Good situation here for the Bombers. Gladwell <laughs> just causing a brief stoppage. It hasn't had the impact around the ball, Siggins, as we used to, obviously, because he's playing forward. I like to see a little bit more midfield. I mean, obviously, the forward is working out for him. He's kicked three snags, so nothing to complain about, really, but maybe he could really break this game open if he went in the midfield and, and drove the ball forward a little bit more. Smith slaps this one down, Bealey applying the pressure to Tilly. He had first hands on the ball pretty frequently today, Sam Tilly. Stoppage work has been good. Now there's some Cleary going at it off the ball. Back up, Smith with the double slap over the top to Siggins. Just threw it away and then Clarence would clear the area. Almost juggling the mark there was Franklin. The pre was combined and then they'll sweep the handball out towards Green, but it's like an awkward bounce for him out of play. Green just rolling up the boundary throwing he's play a little bit more forward this game but often coming up to the stoppage and himself involved Phillips slaps it to Hooker who's immediately claimed probably all over him Phillips again right down green first to the full swings a kick into the middle into dispute and knocking it at the head was Ned Shaw crashing through racket now Sutton Oliver has a hold of him. Familiar pattern of the first half continuing here in the third term. Stoppage after stoppage. Phillips wins this one down. Bell Chambers. Pouncing on him was Mapley. 
And he's back, in fact, so free kick will go the way of Bill Chambers. He drives it through the corridor, up towards half forward. Great spoil there from Bealy, athletic stuff, and then Holmes just gets legged. That'll be a even free kick paid. Diving there for the ankle tap. Right under the nose of the umpire. So James Holmes, on the half back line, steers them up towards the wing. Good mark taken by Preshaw. Stabs an ugly, risky looking kick into the middle, invites McManus, invites all sorts of danger. Ryan forced to defend, but the Bombers now through Tilly will send the ball inside the Ford 50. One on one in the square, beautifully defended, saw it away from Siggins on that occasion. Did a fish up. And the free kick will go the way of the Ruse, going to Liam Howard. Big win that from Harry Fisher. Howard chips it outside defensive 50. Finds Jack Preshaw. Short kick. Again, inviting a little danger. King and Ryan looks to turn away with it. His kick. Nearly ugly off the side of the boot and out of bounds on the full. Just laying themselves down with their ball use at the moment here, the Ruse. As the ball is turned straight back over to them, both sides perhaps struggling by a foot. Tyson Hanslow, he's kicked two. He sends this one in the green direction. Looks link in the chain to be Protney. Scared just dropping into the space was Keegan Ryan, who can wheel and send it into the pocket. Well, ugly kick, but it worked out all right to Aloms. Aloms sends it towards McGapen. Gapen eludes two defenders, gets it on the left, and kicks a wonderful goal. Max Gapen with some fast footwork in the fourth pocket. A lovely finish, and we're all square at the tip midway through the third term. Usually that ball inside forward 50 let them down, but this time they, they surged it. Max Gapen again, his first goal. Just shaked and baked and went around the corner. Another young player for the Roos. He made his debut last year and looked really lively. Hasn't had a lot of the ball today, but he's certainly a, a threat down forward. It's a bit of a, a chaos, but really the ball played into the forward pocket. Took a very accommodating bounce. Rather than that, it would have jagged sideways out of play for a throw in. But uh, fortunately for the Roos, straight into their forward's hands and suddenly... They're all square here, midway through the third term. We're expecting a tight battle. That's just what we're getting. Smith into the ruck. He wins this one down. And charging through the back of the contest is Hooker. Hooker will drive them forward. Oh, intercept mark was dropped back there by Fisher. That's trouble. Here's a chance for Hooker. He misses. Sure he had to go for the dribble kick there, Hooker. Maybe could have sized the goals up. Probably should have got a goal out of that one, to be honest. But again, that's all that was about their kicking problems today. Four goals, 12 now. As Smith unable to keep that one in play. 16 scoring go, shots to 10. Tells the story. Six. Just a one-point lead for the home side. That's <laughs> I guess we'll see at the end of the game if they got away with it. Well but done, been a, an ugly sort of display in front of goal for Lauderdale. So been pretty wasteful back there. Siggins has kicked three there, four. Smith slapped it down. Umpire's whistle was blown. Advantage initially, I thought, going to be blown, but it's uh, going to be a free kick back the other way. Going the way of Hayden Smith. Uh, can the big Ruckman find a target? Or just go the set-up kick. Top of the square. He does just that. Finesse is a beautiful ball into the pocket. And he finds Franklin. Lovely ball that from Big Smith. Yes. Put it on a platter. And Franklin showed good patience. Now an opportunity for a girl they really need to kick, given the opportunities they've squandered by. Great lowering the eyes there of Big Hayden Smith. Could have just blasted away like we've seen a few times with Lauderdale, but great. Great vision to spot. So can Franklin find their fifth? He kicks from 40 out. It's a shocker. Won't even trouble the scorers. Out of bounds on the full. And their troubles in front of goal continue. 
getting a little bit ridiculous now. Oh, I'll, I'll add it's not looking great for him. One's to Fisher deep in the back pocket, tight to the line. Tries to generate some run, Fisher. Got a goal by him doing that in the last quarter, him charging out of defence. They need a bit of a sparking. Can I get it out the back of this contest? Battling away is Howard. Gathers the football, but then coughed it up. Taken across the line there was Finn Rackett. Most of the game's been played. He's on this side of the ground in this exact spot. And down, back into the corridor. Hooker couldn't quite gather. Umpire says over the shoulder. Free kick going the way of Preshaw. Now Jack Preshaw has a look, assesses the options, and sends them up towards the half forward line with a swirling kick. At least out the back to Winter. And then just hitting the wind a little there, I think. And Glover able to drop into the space and intercept. And then he's kicked just too far out ahead. And that's got to be high contact. Norton there, coat hanging a little. He'll go back and have the opportunity to put his side ahead. Big kick in the context of this game. 14 and a half minutes gone to put them in front. And the... Kicking woes of Lauderdale have really troubled him. This would be a massive goal if, if Baxter North can score this. Usually very good by foot is Baxter Norton. A big kick this one to give his side a five-point lead here in the third quarter. From the paint, he sends it on its way. It's drifting across the face. And we're all square once more. 4-12 to 5-6. Holland from fullback. He's in the Phillips direction. In the space in front was Howard. Getting up from his hands and knees to compete there. And flipped into the corridor, ducking the head a little there. It was Tilly. And he's claimed, umpire might say that's his prior, and he does. He pings him, holding the footy. Try and shrug the tackle. That's your prior opportunity. King and Ryan rewarded. Handball off to Howard, forced to kick under pressure. Pitch just in front of Smith. Spiked away there by Suki into the path of Paprotny. Off balance, got the handball to Norton. Norton worked the handball back there to McGee. McGee couldn't quite find a marking target. Fell to Green. Green shuffles it out. Snap kick from Congestion is through the middle for a goal. Didn't quite catch who that was there, Bo. Not sure if you did, but they've got the goal. And more importantly, they've got a seven-point lead in this game. Be Max Gaffin. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. He's run off now, but might be Max Gaffin with that one. So either way, 6-6. Six, six. Clarence leading this one by a goal. They're taking their chances where the opposition are not. Lauderdale. Well, they'd be made to rue some of these misses. Back to the middle. Phillips. Resume his duel with McGee. And Phillips just monsters that and launches it deep. Takes a... Tumbling bounce out of play. And the head there of Sam Siggins. Big kick inside forward 50, that one from Phillips. It creates another opportunity for Lauderdale to get numbers inside the forward 50 and try and create something out of nothing. Yeah, Smith wins it down. The hands from Franklin Siggins, sharp to Hooker. Hooker, his kick just impacted. It's bending, bending back, drifts around on the breeze. And they respond, the Bombers. And they square this one up here in the third term. 5 12 to 6 6. We're level once more. And it's a real battle we've got developing down here at the tip boat. Link of hand passes there from, I think it went from Boscott to Siggins to Hooker. And they just spread and then. Really hard for Clarence to defend that one. 
So great goal there for Fletcher Hooker, who's coming back to play a full season, I believe. He played half the season last year. Was at Southport in Waffle. Yeah, you can hear us. So he's come back with his two other brothers. They all rate very highly down there at Lauderdale Jury. Yeah, there's uh, three of them. Fletcher, Campbell and Riley all in the team. Phillips again just goes the big spike and launches it forward out the back of the contest. Won't be able to get the clearance this time, though. This clearance had good presence on the defensive side of the stoppage. Great looking bounce there, Brad Purse. You don't usually see TSL umpires bounce it. Yeah, Phillips uh, yeah, the big spike. Busting through hands low. Pretty sure. Body on the line stuff there. Tough in the clinches, holding the football, says the umpire. Dived on top of it. Free kick will go the way of the Bombers and Big Phillips. Hanslow down. Preacher and Hanslow both worse for wear after finding themselves in the bottom of packs. Pretty sure it looks like he might have hurt his shoulder a little as he limps uh, away towards the sideline. Phillips chips it. I don't know if that was his intended target, but found its way through to Perkins. Perkins back to Franklin. Hands and knees work the handball back to Martin. Martin slaps it on the boot deep inside Ford 50. The fly from behind from Gridley. But Protney works the handball out, and they should be able to clear defensive 50. They do, but Ryan has a bit of a fumble. And it's out of play for a throw in. Ticking a red time in the third quarter. Scores level here at Skybus. Real arm wrestle of a game, this one. And so many stoppages. Here is one more. Phillips wins it down nicely. The slick handle just eluding McManus, but he followed up well. Sends it towards the forward pocket. And taking hold of that a little. He pitches backward, battling away. Was Perkins underground a handball finds a target in the end and then slickly worked back to Martin. Martin swings it inside 50, not quite taken down there. Handball from Hanslow worked it to Fisher. Fisher clears defensive 50, puts it out in front of Mapley. Sutton there. Mapley brings him down and brings play to a halt. Good work from the big fella there on the smaller midfielder Sutton. Would have been looking to bounce away. Phillips. Towards the boundary line, Sutton sees it across. Yeah, he's a big boy, Andrew Phillips. I didn't realise that I was playing a game of AFL 9. Not against him, thank God, but in real life for the first time. He is absolutely massive. So, Matthew and McGee are actually doing really well to, to fight here. Yeah, they won't get a tougher matchup than this all year as Shaw slams it on the boot. Just bounces awkwardly for Siggins. Fisher's handball back towards Siggins and thrown in once more. Well, that doesn't look like on the scoreboard. It just looks like they're a really well-rounded tight board. They've got some great forwards, obviously, Val Chambers and uh, also Martin down in defence. Really settled defence in the midfield, obviously, the big asset. Smith works it back in towards... Tackle laid by uh, Norton there. Just that onto that, you, you really wonder why these, these guys are missing some pretty easy kicks. Taking their chances there. Smith wins this one down. Again, Norton applying the defensive pressure, wrapping up Riley Hooker. That's a repeat. Stoffy just continues. Smith looking to use his size. Lent in. Hanslow able to get the clear and kick around the corner. Handball from Walsh to Sutton. Martin's bobbed up in the forward line, slamming it on the boot. Tyler Martin for goal. An unlikely avenue, but he does what so many of his teammates have struggled with this afternoon. It's taken the big key defender to show him how to do it. He gets there six of the afternoon. They lead 6-12 to 6-6. Popped up out of nowhere there, Tyler Martin. We were just speaking about him being a great defender, and now he's bobbed up and chipped in for a goal. So, again, it just... So they're back to six points. Not a lot of time left on the clock, so the shoot will be another goal here for Lauderdale. We'll put them in a pretty strong position going to three-quarter time, but again, massive goal there just to break the ice. 
Zoe, where they've uh, struggled to find the big sticks. They love their big defender rolling down there, getting involved in doing that. As did he dive on top of that one? The umpire circling ominously, and he pings him. We kick we go the way of Walsh. He's like, punished there. Not a great kick from Walsh. Did Boss got no real favours? Who's really excited here in this third quarter after a pretty prominent first half. Clarence now swing it back the other way, just over the head of Green, hitting the pack with speed. But Protney, and he's buried in a tackle. Can't fault the defensive work of both these sides. Sookie there making that stop, but just, uh, there's been some foot skill issues throughout the day. You can't fault the defensive pressure and work rate. There's been a real intensity about it. Does Clarence get this clearance? He'll swing it straight down the throat of Sookie. Takes the relieving mark. He's kicked, though. Charged down by Cooney. Handball back to Sookie. He'll clear the defensive 50. Perkins stretching. Couldn't quite keep it in. Spills out the back for hookup. And eventually the boundary line wins out. Great day for footy. You see the fans packed in. There. On the coach's box side of the ground. Whoops, winning this one's out. Handball off to Tilly again, showing some of that dash. He arches the back and bounces away. Then forced just to pull up and just finesse a little chip kick over the top. Worked out okay, but Clarence able to work back with numbers. Might have just gotten the back there, though. Free kick would go the way of the Bombers and hooker. He turns on the left and he pumps them deep to the goal square. Plenty of numbers back there. Fisher couldn't quite juggle the mark. And that will be a free kick against McManus. Going the way of Keegan Wiley. In red time here in quarter number three. Six point lead the way of the Bombers. Uh, Wiley clears defensive 50 up towards the contest. Suki with strength. Takes a good mark. Tony Suki will swing them inside 50 once more. Floats one inside. Couldn't find a marking target. Again, Wiley able to repel if he can keep it in. Just does so to Hanslow. Using every centimetre of the field there. Hanslow, no one on the mark, so he's able to just wheel in and chip it to Norton. Norton in turn, chipped it to Tompkins. Tompkins over the top to Holmes. Good transition play here from the Roos. And Bealy launches them inside, forward 50. Can they find a marking target? The whistle's gone, and it's going to be a hold. And it's going the way of Clarence. So initial confusion. And they're going to get a shot here to try and square things up once more. Yeah, Cooney, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, it's looking at the umpire going, yeah, what's, uh, what's the call here? Will be Cooney the benefactor? It was a really early whistle. We heard that. I think the ball was still up in the air when Chris Cave pulled that. Yeah, that pretty obvious. Yeah, I think there's been something before our video got there in the end. Well off the ball. So Cooney to level things up here late in the third quarter. He misses. He had a couple of opportunities this quarter. Yes, I've been able to convert five-point ball game. Stage being set for a uh, grandstand finish in the final term, perhaps. Bit of a bumper crowd. But, uh, Sky must be able to start the season. Lovely day for football. This one floats towards Phillips. Had a juggle in the end. That's plenty of it and paid the mark. Uh, Phillips. Impactful as we expected, the former Essendon Ruckman. Backing back with courage, not paid the mark though, was pre-sure. Boss got with two to beat, spiked away, fell into the path of Siggins. Siggins from the pockets! Across the face. And somehow stays in play in the end. They want to rush this one through. Liam Howard does just that. And restores the six-point lead. Won't be too long left in this quarter, although... Lots of stoppages for ball laps. Launch long, Mapley well positioned. Phillips comes in from the side and just thumps it out of play. Just around the grounds, Drewy. Launceston and North Launceston. 0 3 Launceston. And the Bombers 19 19, 133. Harvey Griffiths with. You seven. what now? Yep. <laughs> and then at the Twin Ovals 80 to 37. 11 14, Kingbright to. 
five, seven, thirty-seven to the days. Wow, that is uh, quite the turn up. Anyway, back to this one as I just try and process that score. Preshaw swings it back out towards the wing, towed towards the line. Here's Tilly. Showed plenty of dash today and shows good composure to find Sutton on this occasion. Time enough for the Bombers perhaps to get one like goal here. They set it up inside Ford 50. It's all Clarence and Tom Cleary able to take the intercept. Really lively, Sam. So they liked his game this afternoon. Yeah, he's added plenty of speed around the ball. It's uh, really stood out in the game with so many stoppages where it's kind of been res repeat stoppages and hard to get any separation. They certainly had an impact. He's Clarence try and work their way up the field with short kicking options. Quite happy to take three-quarter time, perhaps. And we'll have a slight wind advantage in the final term to come home with. Only slight, admittedly. As Coons taken over the line, we tick towards 30 minutes played in quarter number three. It's great to see the younger players stand up for Clarence. Obviously, Colin Garland out, Sam Green, Baker Smith. All pretty experienced players in that engine room and the forward line, so they've done well, Clarence. Phillips palms it down. First to it, Gapen. Freeshaw looks it up towards the half forward line. That's a really nice mark from Poland. Read it well in flight. He's going all over that, and he switches it across to Sutton. Sutton sets it out for Ned Shaw. Oh, fumbled the mark. Now under some pressure. Ducks under the tackle nicely. Got it back to Sutton. Sutton steers it with the left and finds the marking target there in Perkins. Perkins back into the corridor. That'll open things up to Tilly. Held up, though, by Tompkins. Now Tilly drives them inside the Ford 50. And a good mark taken right on the siren there from Glover. And that will end the third quarter. It's Lauderdale in the lead by 6 points. 6-13 plays 6 goal 7 to go down in anyone's game this heading into the final turn. Oh, it certainly is. You'd probably, I'd probably favour Clarence going to that end where the wind is behind them. It's going to be really interesting. Last quarter, Sam Tilly has stepped up. I've also liked the game of Perkins, their number 12, who took that corridor kick. It's going to be a really interesting game. I think both coaches will be relatively happy in the position they've put themselves coming into three-quarter time, Drew. Yeah, absolutely. The stage is set for a thrilling finish here. It's a round one TSL action as we kick off this final season of TSL football with a blockbuster here at the tip. And it is, uh, it's been an ugly game at times, but it's certainly been entertaining. And it's all to play for as we turn for the final change. We'll be back in around about five minutes with that final quarter for you. Don't go anywhere. It'll be a fascinating last quarter in store here. Lord it out. Holding sway by six points.
So ready to go in the final term at Skybus Oval here. Six points the difference as we turn for the final quarter. Lauderdale holding sway, but Clarence perhaps with a slight wind advantage to aid them in this final term. Stage is set for a thrilling finish. Lauderdale have been the better side for much of the afternoon. Nearly in the first half in particular. Didn't quite put it on the scoreboard. And left the door ajar for a Clarence team who Grew into the game, I thought, a bit in that third quarter, but yeah, They certainly did. I reckon Peter Ryan will be pretty happy with that performance that they dished up in that third quarter. Obviously, the ball winners got a big job to do, like Baxter Norton. He is someone I'm going to put the spotlight on. And that guy, Sam Tilly, next to him, I'm going to put the spotlight on as well to hopefully steer them home. A couple of game breakers there. So the ball bounced and Phillips rises high to win it down, but over the shoulder free kick will go the way of Fletcher Hooker. Look out. Wheels out onto the right and sends them inside the Ford 50. Off the hands of Smith. Spins out the back of the contest. Some pressure applied from Wiley. We've seen goals in the opening 30 seconds of quarters twice already this afternoon. And they're threatening to do it again. It's interesting that Bryce Walsh is playing as a small forward. He, he started the game in the Ford line and ending it. Smith wins it down. Clear kick out. Towards Shaw, pitched in front of Tompkins, got a hand in. Free Shaw, just the handball away. Bell Chambers got it to Martin. Kicked one late on in the third term, pumps them deep inside Ford 50, bounces out the back of the contest for Bealey. Bealey with an ugly looking kick, out of bounds on the full. A little soft that, give Perkins a scoring opportunity, but the angle extreme. And he looked, uh, Run inside and open it up. Probably too far out for a snap kick. And he's going to try it. Perkins around the corner. It's the post. Six goals, 14. For all the Bombers. Nearly had some egg on my face there. <laughs> Not quite enough. Can he bring it back. Keegan Wiley launching this one. Look up. Spiking it away. Poland into the contest, but... It, Falls out the back, and now Josh Green down the wing. Squaring ball back into the corridor. We'll set a task there for Tompkins. In the end, it'll be picked up by Tilly. Tilly driving it up towards the half-forward line. Spoil came from behind, but showing some good hands there was Gridley, but he's brought down by Bealey, holding the footy. Important tackle, that one, from Bealey. As uh, Walsh does well to just impede 
Thanks to Norton getting up and then being able to move the ball here. Great gamesmanship that from Bryce Walsh. Not a good kick. Sutton extended a hand, couldn't quite get to it. Cooney. Marching it around on the right towards Greens. His fist came from Bell Chambers, fell into the path of Preshaw. He shanks the kick across towards the line. <laughs> half a shout of insufficient intent. I can't possibly think that was his intention to kick it there. I want to feel so. It's not a great, uh, it's not a bad sort of area though for Clarence to, to regroup here and try and make something out of nothing here. Watch Josh Green at the front of the contest. Phillips unopposed in the end, just slaps it back towards the line. Green kept it in play. Nice work to Gapen. Tight to the line. Back in there. It's picked off by Poland. The pressure mounting here on the Bombers. Preshaw burrowing in. He gets the ball. Can he extract it? Wins it. Eventually it's cleared by Martin. Boskett puts his body on the line. Hands from Howard flicked it over the top. In the end, Tilly able to force it across the line. It'll be tossed in. Not in the kitchen at the moment. Seven point lead for the Bombers. Throwing it into the wind here, the umpire. Again, I would watch Josh Green. If, if the ball can carry, he might run across. Or not. Phillips wins it down. Perkins first to it. He's immediately claimed. A good tackle there. The Loams. Someone you've got to watch, though, at the contest, Josh Green. See him uh, trying to get on the move. Phillips impeded. Perkins, there is Green. Got the handball away to Tompkins. Tompkins gave it to Hanslow. Hanslow stops. Props sends it inside Ford 50. Well trapped there by Preshaw. Going to be clean with the feet. Oh, saving the day again was Martin. He's been enormous back there. And then the relieving mark is taken by Boskett. As they'll try and transition out of defence now. They've been coming back in defence for the last few minutes. Holmes... Making him earn that, but did well. Chip back inside to McManus. McManus to Shaw. Just the 15. Shaw spreads it wide. Good mark taken there by Martin. Martin, push it down the line, had a man on. They've got another man linking the chain over the top. Sutton will head there. It's a nice kick to Franklin. Franklin steadies on the right. Sends them deep inside 50. Smith couldn't bring it down. Spoiled out the back of the contest. Ball in dispute. Hits the deck. Gathered there by Hooker. He in turn is collected. And they'll lock it up for a ball up. I'm just not sure it was the right option there from Franklin just to burst it forward. Maybe clear the area to get Hayden Smith a little bit more of a run jump. With DeWalsh and Wiley able to tackle him before he can get a kick away. Bryce Walsh or Thor Boscott here at the stoppage. He run through it. Make something out of nothing here, Boscott. Smith up against Mapley. Smith takes front position. Spiked away out of there in the direction of Gape and had to be clean by hand and was. They work it over the top, but it won't find its way to Preshaw. Eventually back to Norton. Norton now finds Preshaw. That looked out of play. And Pike calls it as such as Phillips climbs on top of Preshaw. Massive game from Tyler Martin. He uh, put the hand pass there when really out there, Clarence. And the fence, he's done it. Forward, he's done it. Middle of the ground, he's done it. He's been enormous today, the big man. Toss back into play. Phillips parks himself in front and then flicked it over the top to Hooker, but Norton has a hold of him. Silver service again there from Andrew Phillips. Go again here. Towards the line. Preshaw paddles it. And Protney with a sharp handball. Walks onto it. He's immediately collected. Space has been at a premium this afternoon. So many stoppages. Phillips flicks it back in centrally. Good kick. Just a ball up there. Perkins might have got one for a second. But just a ball up as uh, Phillips resumes his battle here with Napoli. Work towards the line. And guess what? They'll go again. 
interesting to see the stoppage stats uh, from your data put out after this one uh, midweek, boat. It will be. It, numbers will be will be damn here, I reckon. See Phillips here. You're right. In first position. Well, taking it nicely was Hooker in stride. The kitten not quite as good, but it'll work out all right as juggling and tumbling to take the mark was Gridley. Probably just beyond his range, so he'll go the set-up kick instead. Puts it into the pocket, the fly, and almost completed down there. Not quite, though, from McManus. Now Preshaw under pressure. They flick a couple of handballs about, and they'll exit defensive 50. Preshaw up against Martin in the air, and Preshaw does well. Takes the mark, and he gets them moving through the middle now. A little bit of dare, perhaps, needed for Clarence. But Protney just forced to hold up because there's nothing developing ahead of him, so... He waits and sets it wide for James Glover. Glover forced wide towards Green. It was a poor kick. And out of bounds on the full. I think I might have just saw Sam Siggins with the jump run. Not too sure. We'll see the bench soon, but we've seen him this quarter. We well, haven't seen him out there, have we? His bell chamber shows a little bit of dash and chips a short one in there. So that complicates things a little bit out. Without Siggins for the rest of the afternoon. Three goals for. This one spiked away. Yeah, Beely was tough. Perkins influenced the contest, and then Franklin's able to fire a handball out. That's a nice mark taken there by Mapley. So he's done, Joey. He's got the jumper on. It looks like it's ice on his right half or shin. Well, big blow there for the Bombers. This one's down the line, out the back to Boskett. Looks to turn into contact with the ball behind. Well, nicely done, Tompkins. Kept the ball in motion. Now here's the dangerous green. Immediate release into the pocket. Martin tracking it back, and he sees it out of play. Uh, maybe green was dealt with uh, after he got rid of the kick. Doesn't look like it's going to be a downfield free, though. Or is it? Well, it has been. Uh, it's been paid. They've played on, taking the goal, and suddenly it's a one-point game there. It looks like Maxi Gapen slotted that one through. So, <laughs> missed that one, but uh, you've got to presume it was just the downfield uh, free kick paid after Green was collected. And we have a one-point ball game. I think it was pretty short. Green was held, or free kick was paid, and then... Preshaw got it from the boundary throwing, which was supposed to happen. The umpire, well, as whistle was quite early, so the old players should have been aware. Well, there's no one back for the Dale, so a bit of a gift there for Clarence. One point game. Phillips rises strongly over the top, knocks it down, ball in dispute. Trying to bash his way through there was Franklin. Spins on the outside. Sutton wins it back for the bomber, slaps it on the boot. High ball, the fist came, sends it wide. In trouble is Hooker, he's caught. Well done there by Gapen, holding the footy. One point game, Siggins is out of it. His afternoon has ended. Clarence, perhaps, coming home with a slight wind advantage too. Holmes steers a lovely looking kick and they can build now down the outer flank. Howard sends him inside forward, 50. Not quite able to bring it in to Loams. Falls for Hanslow, he's kicked two. Swept the handball across for Green. Good from this position is Green. And the Roos are ahead in the final term. Josh Green from the pockets. And are the Bombers going to be made to Roos some of these misses? It's 8-7-55 to 6-14-50. They've hit the front row down them. That is outstanding there. They've just surged it again forward. Josh Green sizing it up from the pocket. Clarence up. Now in front by five points. It's going to make it very difficult without Sam Siggins there on the park. But again, Clarence just being able to transition it. Tom Cleary all by himself. Found Green and then Green able to slot it. So just a bit of a lapse in defence there from all that. So good from dangerous areas as Phillips decisively spikes that one forward. Spills out the back. Holmes will be first to it for the ruse, though. Has time to gather. Steady. And then he hits up for Protney. Defensive side of the wing. Clarence. 
Hung in there in the first half. Kept themselves close. They've taken the lead, but uh, a poor kick that one. Straight to Phillips. He sends them towards the half forward line. Floats out the back. Let's do it again is Holmes. Holmes brought down by Tilly. Just got a handball away in time. Gridley bashing in there against Holmes. It's tight to the line. It'll be a ball up. So now Alan Christensen has a bit of a problem on his hands. Hayden Smith isn't getting it done as much as Sam Siggins would in the forward line. So what do we do? Ruck here against McGee. Won it down for Protney first to it. Here's the area. The hands of a Loams. Walsh. Perkins. Perkins reels it in. The umpire calls for it. I think if Christensen might consider rucking Smith and putting Phillips forward. Phillips here tries the massive slap again. Didn't quite connect that one. That might be in the back there on Baxter Norton. Caught down emphatically as uh, Phillips now getting involved some afters. Which they don't. Uh, Seems away 50 there. That's a nice kick into the corridor for Bealy. Dinks one further afield. Hands low. Slick give. They find a marking target. Might need some holding off the ball. Bell Chambers, though, oh, just eludes some trouble. He'll play the one-two. Green applying the pressure. By hand, they work it out of defence to Walsh. Walsh had the spare on the overlap in Perkins. That's just where he heads. And now they go wide to Boskett. So we thought there might have been a little encroachment there. Wheels off. Darts back around Howard. He'll receive it back from Perkins. Boskett trying to make something happen here. He slaps it inside 50 through hands. Smith back there couldn't gather. Bealy shrugs the tackle. Was composed, James Bealy. His kick can't quite find the marking target. It's just slapped off the ground out of there, but it'll be brought back. Chopping the arms for a kick. Oh, contact. Not sure he's going to be right to take that for a kick. The trainer's just going to get him off the field. Now, Lauderdale need to press up the field and really cram them in. No good big target up forward. Obviously, Hayden Smith, but Sam Siggins for the rest of the afternoon. And Wiley kicks it straight to Andrew Phillips. Plenty of marks today, the big Ruckman. Sends them forward once more. This is where his next kick is where it's broken down all afternoon for them, though. Can Sutton change that? He sends him inside forward 50. That's a better use of it. And he finds the leading target of Franklin. Sorry, it's uh, Campbell Hooker, in fact. So Sutton, just with that little bit of composure, they've lacked for much of the afternoon. Campbell Hooker. Massive kick here. Six goals, 14 they've kicked. Can he... Reclaim the lead for the Bombers. He sends it on its way. It looks good off the boat. He loves it. Campbell Hooker drives it through and they're back in front by a point. 7-14-56 to 8-7-55. It's a one-point ball game. 16-minute mark in the final term. Again, right there from Waterdale to get the ball forward. Big mark there from Hooker. Had the... Had the space on Tom Cleary there. Tom Cleary just holding back a little bit and Hooker took full advantage of that front position. And, and in the end, uh, Cleary was really nowhere, nowhere near him. All he could do was watch on and off on the mark, really, Tom Cleary. So big, big goal there for Lauderdale as they put him one point back in front. But still a whole lot of work to do for both teams. One point the difference. Anyone's game, this. It's going down to the wire in round one. Pretty sure he's met by Boscott, who's moved in to the midfield here. Trying to get some key movers around the ball. The Dale. Phillips slapped it down. Couldn't quite find Tilly. Baxter Norton will be first to it. Took the handball back to Glover. Glover's kick sets a task, but up to it was Pretty sure. Spoiled it and then marked his own spoil. Very clever stuff. Now he dinks it on the left. Finds Hanslow. 
Two goals this afternoon, Tyson Hanslow. He saunters into the middle and swings them forward once more. Green lurking, but Martin had his name written all over that one and intercepts once more. Sets it out in front of Sutton, dropped it off his chest, coughed it up to Ryan. Now Holmes, and Holmes is all alone. And he can go back for the immediate response. His first opportunity for the day, Drewy. He obviously a key forward a bit on and off. Great season last year. He's looked too bad, to be honest, Bryce Holmes. He just, uh, just hasn't been given the opportunity. He usually has forward. And Bryce Alome sees the moment here in the final term. He sends it on its way. It's dead eye straight, and they retake the lead. The Roos, 9 7 61. Suddenly, we're going goal for goal after they've been such a rare commodity all afternoon. And it's the Roos back out in front by five as we tick towards red time. Yeah, 18 minutes gone. 7 14 56 to 9 7 61. It's going to be a cracking finish, Drew. Oh, Boscott being moved into the middle. Tilly as well. It's going to be Ryan. Very short. It's going to be Mapley in the ruck as well. And coming alive here in the final term. Phillips again going the big leap and spike as he tries to exert his influence on this contest. Boscott following up. He's under pressure from behind by Hanslow. Oscar did well from ground level. All there to be won. Tilly gathers. Shrugs free of the tackle. Then he was just put off by Paprotny. Ryan gets to it. He dinks a little ball out of there, and that'll relieve the pressure. Zimark is taken on the wing. Chips it down the line. He finds Paprotny who continued his run. Oscar Paprotny lofts it up towards the forward line. Martin drifting in from the side to influence. Alomes! He's taken it again. Staying to have an influence here is Alomes. Oh, I thought Tyler Martin got a, a fair clunk of that. <laughs> the umpire does not share that view. And Bryson Lomes, who's been quiet for much of the afternoon, he's got a chance for two goals in two minutes. Could kick Clarence out to an 11-point lead. Massive moment in this contest. He wheels out to the right. It's got the journey. It's got the accuracy. The ruse by 11. They're storming home at the tip. Might not be your day, but it might be your moment. Bryce Alomes take about two quick goals to put him 11 points in front. Didn't get a whole lot of service early in the game, Drew. He, he did look lively, but now the Roos have chosen to go to him. Hayden Smith's off, so you just think who's going to be that tall option down forward for Lauderdale to, to win them the game. But Bryce Alomes with two quick ones. Win factor of play there again, just able to launch from outside 50. It had the carry. Make notes, Lauderdale, I reckon, because they given up a few behinds doing that. So they need two goals now, the Bombers. They're going to have to dig deep late on. Sutton flicks the handball across. Tilly is battled hard, but Hanslow wins it for Clarence, who are suddenly surging forward. They're flowing with confidence as Tompkins works it over the top to Ryan. And he can eat up 30 seconds here. Surely will be in no rush. And this is a, a part of the ground we've seen goals kick from today. The wind seems to have certainly aided plenty of shots from here. Loams moments ago is just the latest example. If he kicks this, it might put the game out of reach. Keegan Ryan. He'll kick from 55. And he too splits the difference. And the Roos are running away with this one. They're surging to the finish line. 11 at 7, 73. They're up by 17 points. And the Bombers, it looks like, are going to be made to pay for their prof legacy in the first half. They've left the door ajar. And Clarence in this final term have just smashed their way through it. They seriously have. This has been a great display by Clarence. Just the spread. Lauderdale just... Again, a defensive lapse. We saw it again. The first goal with Bryce Alomes. Tom Cleary all by himself. Alomes led up the ball, got the mark. Ryan, they had that over overlap hand passing kick. And again, we see another goal off turnover. 
It's going to take something spectacular from here. Oh, Phillips oh. won it down. Franklin bustling through. Banana inside 50 there. Took a bit of an awkward bounce, but it was beautifully trapped. And the Rose will bounce off 50 here up towards uh, Tompkins. But he's just outpointed by Ned Shaw. Got to get it moving quickly, though. Handed it off to Finn Rackett. Rackett sets it up. Tough coming together there. Spills out towards the Clarence defender. And that's well marked by Bell Chambers. He can get them right back in there. They need three goals, though, and they haven't got long left. Bell Chambers. To the teeth of Gull. Off hand, spills out to the pocket. First to it will be Glover. Oh, that's oh. poor though. A lack of composure. Coughed it straight up to Sutton, who's about to get mown down by Preshaw. Oh. And it impacts the kick. And it's spiked into the point post. So it'll be a throw in. And I don't think Sutton was aware that Preshaw was bearing down on him. Just a lack of communication there. No one let Sutton know that he was hot on his tail. and. Again, they're just a lot of missed opportunities all out. Saving tackle there from Preshaw is another one is laid by Franklin on Paprotny. If you Andrew Phillips, you want to be a little bit more efficient with the hit outs. He's done great all day, but into to space. And that one down to Hooker from the pocket. McManus working it back. Spoiled away. And a play for another ball in. But the seconds continue to tick by. Time, real enemy of the Bombers now. The Roos looking to draw first blood here in season 2024. Some big battles between them this year. Phillips out of the ruck. Sharks it shoots and gives them a glimmer. Andrew Phillips does it himself this time. Brings it down. Snaps truly. 11-point ball game. We've ticked 24 minutes. Certainly have big goal there from a big game player. He's had an outstanding TSL comeback, Andrew Phillips. He's been magnificent in the ruck for him. He's done it down forward. I reckon he'll go back in the ruck now. Again, just talking about his efficiency. On some occasions, he slaps it forward, and sometimes if you're going to do that plan, you might want to have the forward stream up the half forward line so someone's there to collect the ball instead of just surging it forward but on Phillips um, he, could, he could easily win this game off his own hand and, and boot back to the middle they go Phillips again decisively winning it down Franklin was in there and then Phillips will get the clearance as well he sends them inside the forward 50 tumbling bounce at ground level just missing the handball taken by Holmes He's buffeted it off it. Pressure coming from Hanslow. It's desperation stakes as hookers on the bottom of the pack. And the umpire comes in to call for it. Not a whole lot of time left. 25 minutes and 10 seconds gone. Phillips slaps it down. Franklin busting his way through. Selling some candy. Franklin with the flying shot. He misses. He could have cut the lead to Unregal. He did all the hard work, but he puts it wide. And it's a 10-point game. 15 behind, Street. 15. Remarkable. They have been wasteful. They're not quite done yet, though. Clarence have done well, but they've got to close it out. The Bombers pushing late. Up towards the contest. Flying over the top was Rackett. Slapped it down. Who can take clean possession? Ned Shaw can. He looks up. He's bumped off his kick there by Cooney. It impacted the direction, and he kicks it straight to Hanslow. Steady things down. Well, he saw a leading Aloms and went there, and boy, as this man comes to life in the final term. Strong Mark Rice Aloms. Just time to slow it down. Ten points you think would be enough. Not sure how much time is left on the clock, obviously, but... 10 points is pretty big in the context of the game. Up to another contest looking for McGee. It was spilled away from him, but they'll force a stoppage at the right end of the field as far as the Roos are concerned. Phillips looking for Franklin. But uh, Norton gets the clearance. He sends it in the Josh Green direction. It trickles out of play. All seconds will tick by. State the obvious, one more goal will do it. 
obviously, but we've got to get that goal first if we're going to shut the curtains on this one. Holmes in the ruck against Phillips now, so he'll get his first crack in the ruck. He's been influential in this last term, and competes well. But, uh, it'll be the Bombers who get the clearing effort through Franklin, just slapped it on the boot. They come from all directions, spills out the back. Franklin again there. Now perhaps a chance for sure. Handball to Poland with some dash through the corridor. Here they go. Last chance saloon perhaps as McManus drives them inside the Ford 50. It's a one-on-one -on -one back there. Took an awkward bounce. Martin bobbing up there. He's already kicked one today. Now it's Sutton in the pocket and Bealey escorts him across the line. So shifted Tyler Martin down forward. I like it. I think on another occasion you'd have him streaming out on a lead. Or even bombing it to the top of the square, he, he can mark that that ball. Great idea from Christensen if he's controlling this game back. But 28 minutes gone, it really all but over. And to know how long he's left, Phillips and Mapley. Phillips wins it down. They crash in for how's the umpire see that? Is it going to be? Oh. It's going to be a free kick to the Bombers. Might be contact below the knees. take the kick, I would have thought. Time's been blown off, I think. Eventually, it's going to go the way of Thor Boskett. So, they've sorted that out. And now Boskett with a chance to cap the margin to four points in the 29th minute. And this be fitting. Big kick. And there, boom, a recruit. Keep them in this one late. Must kick this goal. And he shanks it wide. And it's been the story of the Bombers' afternoon. 8 16 64. And there's a couple out of bounds on the full in there as well. It has been wasteful goal kicking. And it's looking like it's going to haunt them. Beely in the back pocket. Short to Norton. And they just run a little clock here. The final siren can't be too far off. Norton sends it up in the Mapley direction. Over the line goes Gridley. As he is surrounded by Roos here. They won't miss the chance to get stuck in. But uh, making sure they don't do anything silly and gift the ball to them. As we tick into the, the 30th minute, Phillips Green hits the contest hard. Falling over the top though, Manus. Hands and knees gaping. Throwing after Dolliver. They're just running more and more time here. Oh, the Roos. They might have done enough. And a thrilling season opener. Two teams we expect to be there at the pointy end. Showing that are tightly matched. Looked towards the Loam's direction. He's taken another one. He has come to life in this final term, Bryce Alomes. Barely fired a shot for three quarters, but he's been dominant. And he will use up all of his 30 seconds here. And then the little chip over the top to Green might have me on, so he can do likewise. It matters not. There is the siren. The ruse of one. Only the margin now to be resolved. Can Alomes add another one? Not with a kick like that, he won't. It matters not. Clarence, nine-point victors in the season opener here at Skybus Oval. Lauderdale, 8-16-64, kicked themselves out of it. Clarence, they were plucky, they hung in there, and then they were outstanding in that last quarter when the chips were down, 11-7-73. The first victory of the season for them. I think we're going to see some great battles between these two this year, possibly even in September, Bo. Downham, what did you make of our first look at these two teams? Well, it, it looks like the hype was all there for Lauderdale to, to start off with the game, but obviously the, the kicking was an issue. They they held the game for large patches, Lauderdale, and ultimately, I wouldn't call it a choke, but 15 behinds, you just, just can't justify that. We said, I said half-time, we'll either get away with it or I won't get away with it. They didn't get away with it today, but... Brilliant performances there from Bryce Holmes. He really bobbed up when it mattered for the Brewers, Drew. Yeah, they were really good uh, in the clutch situations there in that final term. They, they played a great final quarter. Clarence did what they needed to do. 
I'll get you to run us through the goal kickers for the afternoon before we uh, sign off here, Bob. Sam Siggins with three. Hopefully he's okay. It might be a calf, might be a, uh, something else there. So hopefully he's okay. Sam Chilly with one. Fletcher Hooker with one. Tyler Martin, Andrew Phillips. Campbell Hooker with one apiece as well. Two to Hanslow, two to Josh Green, two to Keegan Ryan, two to Bryce Holmes, and one to Maxi Gapin. So big performances there from the Clarence players. It was indeed. It was a game that the Bombers might look back on as one they let get away. They had the opportunities to build a big lead in that first half, didn't take them, left the door ajar, and the Ruse, well, they took full advantage with a fantastic last quarter to get a victory in this big opening game at Skybus Oval. It's going to be a fascinating battle between these sides throughout the season. A good first taste here. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage here on the live stream. I've been Andrew Coolman calling the action with me, Bo Downham. Hope you enjoyed that one. We'll see you again next week for round two in this final season of TSL football. We're off to a good start here as Clarence Claim the first four points on offer. Nine point victors. Lauderdale, 8 16 64. Defeated by Clarence, 11 7 73. Bye for now.